So if you've seen the title of this video, it's a question, and it's a question I want you to answer. I will give the answer, but I don't want to give it straight away because I want you to sit with that question. And the question being here, what is the opposite of having a plan? Okay, that's our question. And I just want you to spend a moment and try to answer that question. Now, this video is for anybody who feels stuck in life. It's for anybody who has life goals, they feel overwhelmed, they feel like they're procrastinating, they're not making progress. There's also a question somebody sent me here, it's related to this, and I'll read it in a moment. But just in general, we're asking the question, what is the opposite of having a plan? And I want you to, to try and answer that question for yourself. Because in inner work, or in therapy, or any of the things we're doing here, you know what the most valuable thing is? Asking the right questions. That is the most valuable thing. Therapy isn't really as much about finding answers as it is asking the right questions. What are the questions we really should be asking? So here's one, I hope. And it is, what is the opposite of having a plan? Now you may say to yourself, well, I mean, that's an obvious one. It's the opposite of having a plan is not having a plan. But you see, let's explore that a little bit. Two opposites are supposed to be really distinctive, right? Really clearly, there's a clear difference between the two things. Now, when we are feeling lost in life, we will feel like I don't even have a plan. And we come up with, well, I have to get a plan. And maybe now I have a plan. And how often do those plans actually pan out? See, my sense on it is those plans that we make, or to be honest, most of the time we're spent in planning, not actually executing. Where's the big distinction between not having a plan and, and having a plan? To me, there's not really that much of a difference between the two in terms of usefulness, utility, moving us forward, getting us out of stuckness. Okay, now I will give you what I think the opposite really is. But can you accept that, like, for you personally, just ask yourself, have I ever made big elaborate plans and they didn't materialize? Hmm. I did for a long time, right? Big elaborate plans. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And invariably failed to follow through. So yeah, not having a plan doesn't feel good, but this solution called a plan didn't work either. So are they really that different? Are they really opposites? Again, this is for people who feel overwhelmed, right? So if you're feeling overwhelmed with all your goals, and this, this is a question I'm gonna read, it's a short question somebody sent me in, but see if this resonates with you personally. So it says, I have so many goals I want to spend time on, not to mention I have a million and one daily tasks that require my time and energy. So we can all relate to this. How the hell do I get around to it all? Also, how long should I spend daily on my goals? I ask this because ideally I'd like to give a lot of time, but realistically, I know it's not doable. I could really use your insight. Okay. So what we're hearing in this question, if we really listen, is the search for a plan. How do I do all these things? How can I address all my goals in this, in any given day? How long should I spend on each one of the goals? And, and you may have many goals. You may have you have many needs. My model for needs, there's five basic needs, but there are... There's other stuff in life. There's there's life admin stuff. There's like you gotta go take a shower. You gotta you gotta go to the grocery store, 
right? There's all these different things, and this is where this feeling of overwhelm comes in when we don't have the right uh, software, the right mindset, which we'll get to in a moment. But certainly, it, life can feel overwhelming. But this question is really useful because it shows the search for the right plan. If I sit down long enough and I tweak things often enough, I'll eventually find the right plan. In my experience, any perfect plan that you draw up will always deteriorate into chaos anyway. Because life is just too unpredictable to stick rigidly to any plan. right? So if you haven't noticed already, the, the theme of this or the, the message of this video is I'm really undermining the usefulness of planning. In my book, The uh, Procrastination Decoded, I, I, I refer to these plans as the good intentions plan. Right. Sound good. It looks good. It's yeah. All my goals are included in that big plan there. But how often does it actually work? My experience, personally, and talking with people, hardly ever. Hardly ever. So. Okay, I've dragged this out long enough. Let me tell you what the opposite is. So the question again: What is the opposite of having a plan? It's not not having a plan. The opposite of having a plan is decisiveness. That is the opposite of having a plan. When I say opposite, and this is something I've talked about in other videos, and I may do more work on this. We're looking for genuine opposites. At a higher level of consciousness, in a higher mindset, the whole concept of opposites changes. So we're coming out of the lower level of the default solution at a lower level of consciousness. I need a plan, I need a plan. At a higher level of consciousness, planning is compared to something that's actually useful, which is decisiveness. So this tool of decisiveness is going to get us out of a lot of problems here. And it's that mindset it's trying to get us out of. It's the, I have a lot to do today. I need to do everything. I need to address everything. I've got seven things I have to do over here. And then later on, I've got six more things I need to do. And it's completely overwhelming. And it shuts us down. And it leads us nowhere. Our tendency to be overwhelmed by that mentality. I mean, the, the nervous system is already guarded against taking action. You put that software on top of that nervous system, it's not going to work. So we're looking for a different mindset, okay? So we have all these different goals. How are we going to go about addressing them? Well, we're going to use decisiveness. And an aspect of this mentality is, yeah, okay, maybe you've got different goals. The truth is, you only ever have one goal. There's only one goal. And you know what it is? The next one. That's the only goal you have, is the next one. The next thing that you're going to do is the only goal that you have. Because once we identify that as the goal, now we can bring in decisiveness. Okay, time to execute. Time to take action on this. Time to make a commitment to one thing at a time, right? Uh, the mentality we're trying to get into here, the mindset shift is going to be into, I only have one thing I need to do, which is the next thing. It's small. It's easily finished. It's doable. How do you get all these goals and how do you get to the point where you're successful at them or you've got them completed? The answer is always, I make one decision at a time. One decision at a time. Doesn't matter how many goals you have. It's always one decision at a time. So being decisive, and that's what my book is all about, right? You don't even need to read the book. I can tell you right now, I think you should read the book, but I think it's easy enough to, to understand this. Once you understand what's much more important than a big elaborate plan is to be decisive in the next easily achievable thing in my life. And this is really useful, okay? When you're in a higher level of consciousness, when you have this new mindset, 
do you wake up knowing that you're going to be productive and you're going to do x y and z and you're going to achieve all these different things no you don't in fact, you have no idea how much you're going to do in any given day. This is the higher level of consciousness. Oh, because that all your that, that's actually a plan. That would be a plan. When you when you're in this higher level of consciousness, it's like I do the next thing. I'm decisive with it. Okay, that's done. And now I identify, maybe I rest for a little while, just turn inward, identify the next thing to do, and now I'm decisive on that. And at the end of the day, without having a big elaborate plan or good intentions, you look back, wow, look, look what actually happened there just through being decisive and focused on one thing at a time, having boundaries with things. Okay, That's how we become productive and healthy and balanced. We don't actually even need an intention of I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. Now, you, you could have a preference to do it maybe. That's fine. But the usefulness of planning is way overrated in this. So decisiveness, decisiveness looks like, okay, I'm, I'm resting right now. What am I going to do next? Well, I've got six things I need to do. Okay, which one of those things will I do? Some you may think are more important than others. You may want to start with the most important one. But really, as long as you just pick one thing, Okay, that's it. Now, what do I have to do after that one thing? The other five, right? No, that's not the way to think about this. That's all I'm committing to right now. That's it. One thing at a time. That's the only way you get to the end, right? It's the only way you're going to achieve these goals anyway. It's counterintuitive, I, I realize that. But if you can just say to yourself, there's only one thing I need to do today. It's the next thing. After that, I have no agenda. I may make different decisions later on, but I can't worry about that right now because all I can ever do here is what's right in front of me. So, and then in the book I talk about, well, okay, you you start to learn about, okay, making decisions, you have boundaries around things. Sometimes you can have limits about how much exposure you have to them. You can also learn what happens if I don't show up and I say I will, that's a big one. I go into that in length in the book. But briefly, it's about once you fail to show up for yourself, you let that part go for the day. That decision is over and you don't you don't revisit it that day. Okay. But I don't want this video to be too long and I just want to focus on the main topic here of start to value decisiveness way more than making plans. The plan reveals itself to you as you live through decisiveness and also your intuitive guidance system will help you identify okay which of these things do I really need to focus on right here right now just uh, in front of me that's being guided through intuition intuition is a part of that higher mind and it's incredibly useful so that question to the, to the person who sent that question I hope that's useful. It's not the answer maybe you thought I might give, that you need to schedule and you need to set this time here and do that there and take breaks. It's much more about, because you know, you ask me what the best plan is, I could give you a version of the best plan, you'd have a different version than six other people, 100 other people would have 100 different versions. There, there is no plan. We wake up without a plan. And we just take it step by step, one thing at a time. And it doesn't overwhelm the nervous system. It's like, okay, I can do one thing. I can do that. And then I stop and I rest maybe and I'll make another decision. So to finish up, what is the opposite of having a plan? It's not having no plan. It's being decisive if you don't get what I'm talking about in this video it's, it's understandable but I hope it's a useful concept and maybe maybe you sit with it a little bit and uh, let it resonate around it's not a complicated thing I'm talking about at all it's just we're all 
so used to when we're told that we need to have plans so i hope that's useful guys and uh, as always if you've got any comments or things you'd like to share you can do so below and someone told me i should tell people to like these videos more and uh, and subscribe to the channel as well if you want to thanks for being with me and i will see you again very soon take care of yourself Bye-bye.